Awesome. So let's get started. This session is a getting things done session focused on social media and creating live videos. Okay. That's really the name of the game. Now, the objective of this session is to really create a strategy for your social media calendar and content creation. Okay. That's, that's a really, really important element of what you're doing, particularly when we're isolated. You're, if you're in an area where you're stuck inside, like myself, um, and you're wanting to build your business and really connect with your clients, social media is going to be a very important element of that. Okay, so it's important for follow-up, connection, and actually reducing your workload in the future. Okay, so that's going to be something we get onto today. Now, let's get right into it. Okay, this in front of you is what I like to call a social media content calendar. It is a very simple one. Uh, and at the end of the session, if you're interested in having this, I can actually create a unique one for you. Uh, well, not a unique one, but the same one of this. I can make a version of it for you and share it through to you if you're interested. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But this is really a blueprint, a guide for what you should be posting. But it's not just post anything sort of here and there. It actually has a plan to it. Okay, now that plan follows a system called MEAL, M-E-A-L-L. -L. Okay, hopefully my accent isn't getting in the way there, M-E-A-L-L. -L. Now, this is really the structure for how you can post content on social media. Now, the way that it works is that each letter in M-E-A-L-L -L stands for a certain thing, and I've got them written at the top. So we've got market updates, that's M, events, E, advice for buyers and sellers, that is A, and then for the L's, we've got local news, and then listings and lead generation. Now, I've also added in a section for open homes, optional posts, things like that. It might not be an option for you right now, but you might be doing it virtually or something along those lines, okay? But let's actually break down why I've chosen these things. Why market updates, events, advice, local news, listings, and lead gen? Because if you think about it, when you're posting on social media, a lot of people will post the same things. They'll post properties. Uh, they'll post sort of fun f um, facts. They might grab some stuff from Pinterest that's home-related DIY stuff and say, hey, what do you think about this one versus this one? And that's really it. Why is mine a little bit different? Why am I including things that are less real estate related? Well, the context of meal is really being that go-to local resource. It's being that connector, that local leader, as we like to say here at Park Beach. And following meal, market updates, events, advice for buyers and sellers, local news, and listings and lead generation means that you're kind of covering all your bases of what that is. The only really element that's missing is connecting others together, which you can still kind of do through this process, and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's break them down individually. Let's focus on each letter one at a time. Letter number one is M, market updates. And I'm gonna type that in there in case my accent is getting in the way. So I'm gonna put M-E-A-L-L. -L. The first letter is for market updates, okay? Market updates, probably the most familiar thing for the majority of the clients that I work with because it's putting in reports for real estate from the last month. Could be um, sort of highlighting any changes and trends that you're noticing in your niche market or in a wider area, area potentially even national changes. Um, and really, it's all about your industry, okay? Reports, data, analysis, something that is visual. You don't want to get so focused in the number and highlighting all the statistics there. You're more so wanting to show something that's visual, graphs, um, you know, something that's very easy to see, okay? So that's what would go under market updates. Now, number two is events. Now, events is kind of like a TBC right now for most areas where people aren't able to get out and about and connect with others in a face-to-face -face capacity. Some areas, it's still okay. Some areas, it's going to change pretty soon. Um, speaking as someone in Canada, British Columbia is actually doing a really good job against COVID-19, so they might be getting back to, to normal sooner rather than later, uh, whereas areas like Quebec and unfortunately Ontario are a little bit slower, uh, but it'll get there. So face-to-face -face events, a little bit hard to put out there. So what you could do then is focus on what's actually available right now. Now, a lot of businesses that are focused on face-to-face -face connection, personal trainers, yoga teachers, uh, musicians, comedians, um, you know, anyone that relies on having an audience or someone right there, have to pivot. 
And so what a lot of them are doing is that they're pivoting from being face to face to changing to something like this where you can see someone's face on camera. Okay, they're going online, they're going virtual. And what often is happening is that someone like a yoga teacher is going online with their lessons. My wife is a great example of this. She used to have yoga every week in our building, which was awesome. But because of all this COVID-19 stuff, she can't do that anymore because that's not running. So what the teacher has done is that she's created a group online, invited all her regular clients there, and she has regular sessions that she runs on Facebook Live. Now, the teacher can't see the people that are joining. She can just see the number and the names. Uh, however, she can do all the moves and the, the different positions for what is required and everyone can follow along. So when you're thinking about events, these are the types of events you can put up there, virtual events. It could be a art and craft kind of evening. It could be something that a comedian's doing, right? Where they're actually doing a live show. It's just remote. And these are the things you can be promoting, the different businesses that are offering these types of services. So if you've done a bunch of interviews in the past, ask these people, hey, what are you doing? And if you're not doing a bunch, if you've not done a bunch of interviews in the past or they don't have any ideas, look around online for virtual events, virtual uh, placeholders while people can't actually be face to face. Now in an ideal world, you'd be putting on a lot of face to face events, but essentially it's the same thing. It's something that's interesting, something that's varied, um, and it's a good way to really connect with people and provide value to them. Hey, I'm gonna be promoting this or a space for events in my newsletter, in my social media posts. Uh, do you have anything that you want me to promote for you? It's free exposure, free marketing, and it's basically just going to be drawing people towards you. So it's highlighting events. Okay. Now the next one is advice for buyers and sellers. Okay, so we've done M, we've done E, next is A, advice for buyers and sellers. Now, depending on how long you've been in the industry for, you may have a wealth of knowledge which you can highlight, which is wonderful, but you might be relatively new or you might just wanna be looking at other things you can talk about. So a wonderful resource that is available to you uh, are actually, well, they're actually found online. So websites like Zillow, right? Big, huge website. Uh, same with things like NAR, National Association of Realtors. They do consumer reports every year. And it basically talks about the trends and the things that people find important versus the things that people don't really care about so much. It could be buyers, could be sellers, could be renters. They put a whole bunch of data into lots of clear and easy to read graphs. Now, the way to access this is to go to a website like Zillow.com and you're searching for a report. Now, I already know the URL to this and I'm actually gonna share this with you, but I'm gonna put this into the chat box there. What you'll find here is that there are a ton of great resources like this out there. So this is all Zillow's information and what they've put on here are things like seller stresses, right? The things that buyers sacrifice to, avoid, uh, to afford a home, pros and cons of web surveys for yourself. So check out what they've actually put together. Okay, if we go to seller stresses, you're gonna see this really cool sort of visual representation of the things that people find most stressful when they're selling a property not knowing if the home would sell within the design timeframe. According to their data, this is the highest or the, the most stressed about thing. Then it's uncertainty about being able to sell, sell for the design price. You got things like timing the sale with the purchase of a new home, lack of control with overall selling processes or timeline. There's a bunch of them, I'm not gonna read through all of them. But what you can do with this is either create content such as blogs and information pieces about this and put it up there. So that way, buyers and sellers can actually learn. Or you can actually use testimonials or information from people you've worked with in the past that show you make this process easier, that you solve these problems, that you resolve these challenges that people have. And that could be your post. It could be a testimonial, right? You could have a section uh, for your social media post. You could say, top three FAQs that I get from my clients when it comes to selling a home. Number one, number two, number three. There could be things like this. These could be the headlines. And then they could have reviews of how you have solved this or a little bit of information, then reviews based from your clients of how you have solved these things. Okay, so it's building this information up and providing value to people, but at the same time, giving yourself a little bit of a, a sales plug there as well. 
but you don't have to do that. You could just go straight for information. You could be providing info sheets, fact sheets about how to resolve these issues themselves, right? All the things to watch for, the things to be aware, um, aware of, but it depends on what you're wanting to do. If you're wanting to create the wheel from scratch, go for it. Uh, or if you're wanting to kind of combine things you've had in the past, put that out there, that's perfect, okay? So that's a little bit about M, E, and A. So market updates, events, and advice. Now there are two other sections that I'm gonna get into, which are local news and listings and lead generation. But I'm gonna pause here. We've got a few people on the session. Feel free to let me know what questions you've got. So I'm gonna put a note into the chat box. <clears throat> Just saying questions here. Let me know what queries or thoughts you have about what we've covered so far. If you don't have any questions, all I ask is that you say, nope, I'm good to go, let's move on. So then that way I know we can move on when everyone's up to speed. I just don't wanna to cover too much information too quickly without you guys having time to digest it. So let me know in the chat box if you guys got any other questions, thoughts, or anything you wanna go over. Otherwise, what we'll do is just let me know you're good to go and we can move on. I can see Joe's Lee's good to go, fantastic. Uh, so everyone else, let me know if you guys got any questions. I'll give you guys another 30 seconds or so. Otherwise, you guys can put questions in the chat box whenever and we'll move on shortly. Okay, so questions in the chat box now. Otherwise, we'll get on to uh, local news. And this is actually a really cool topic, one that I like talking about quite a bit. So any questions in the chat box, let me know, guys. Give you a little bit of time to, to fill those out. Otherwise, we'll move on 15, 20 seconds or so from now. Now, if you are typing through as well, don't feel like you just delete the question, just put it in there and I'll get onto it whenever we get the seconds to sort of pause and, and get onto that information. Don't feel like you can't ask questions by all means, do that throughout the session. Cool. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transition on, feel free to put any other questions you got into the chat box in there. And what we're gonna get into now is local news. Now, local news, this is everywhere. People are looking at the news all the time. COVID-19, COVID-19, coronavirus, Googling, 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 stats, cases, confirmed numbers, resolved cases, all that stuff. People do that all the time. Now, for me, what I would recommend is not putting more of that out there. There's reputable sources that they're going to follow. They don't necessarily need others putting that information up, particularly if it's maybe not as accurate as other sources out there. What I'm recommending to do here is to share information from these sources, not create your own news and do your own maths behind all that stuff because other people are doing it for you already. So going on to government websites, right? Canada's got a great one where it shows the active number of cases uh, if you're wanting to share that stuff, okay? Or what you could do is change the game completely and focus on something that's positive. I think there's a lot of doom and gloom out there. There's a lot of people that are sharing things that are really designed to make people feel really nervous and scared and uh, not too comfortable in their own skin. And we've got enough of that. Let's focus on some positive stuff. Now, this is something that I've done a few times and people kind of laugh when I do this, but honestly, when you're on Google Next, what I want you to do is type in two words, super important you type them in and they really important that you put both of them in there, not just one. The first one is good, and the second one is news. Now, the reason why I'm saying, suggest, um, saying you should do this is because if you were to just type in the word news, oh, let's get rid of this, and you just type that in here, you're going to get a lot of different things, a lot of different resources available to you. But if you go into the news feed, I mean, most of it's just negative, right? It's all negative. It's all just politics, blah, 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 blah. We get enough of this. What I want you to do is change that search to good news. Now, what happens when you do this is that you can actually get uplifting positive stories. Now, if you're thinking about being that go-to local leader, do you wanna be the one that's sharing the doom and gloom, or do you wanna be the one that's sharing positive things that encourage people, that show them that there is a light at the end of the tunnel that help others get through this type of stuff? There are resources out there like the Good News Network, that only share positive things. 
they do not share anything negative because that's not their prerogative. They want to be sharing positive things. Now, it's not false things. It's all true. They're just siphoning out all the negative stuff and putting in the real, true, good stuff out there. So you can actually scroll down and look at some of the different things that people are actually putting out there. Okay, little interesting one. Lego Factory is now producing thousands of PPE uh, masks for medical workers. That's a cool little news piece to put in there rather than focusing on something that's doom and gloom. This one here, 99-year-old World War II veteran raises $3.3 million for hospital workers simply by walking laps of his garden. That's something that's going to put a smile on someone's face. That's something that's positive. It's not going to be, hey, this is the toll of this. This is the numbers of this. It's positive. And so what you could be doing in your social media posts is making a habit out of sharing something that is worthwhile and valuable to others. Okay. So Good News Network is a great resource for you to check out. Now there is a relatively notable actor that has kind of engaging in this sort of uh, thing now. And he can be found if you type in some good news. His name is John Krasinski. I assume the majority of us know who he is, but for, for those of you that don't, he is from The Office um, and a lot of other famous films now. And he has created a little television series or a YouTube video series uh, called Some Good News. And he only shares positive good things. This could be something you even talk about in your social media posts. It could be literally finding this on YouTube sharing that article on your Facebook page and saying, hey, check this out. Here's some good news, literally. And you can see some really good things in there. Okay, in the most recent one, he took some workers from his like hometown in, uh, in, in Massachusetts and took them to like Fenway Park and they got to throw out the first pitch because that hasn't happened in um, baseball and it's obviously a huge part of the baseball world, the baseball community. And so it was just like a nice little thing that he's doing there. The organization behind it was huge, got a whole bunch of people to like cheer them on as health workers. This is a good stuff that makes people happy and, and, and see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, like I said before. So sharing things that are positive, okay? Now, you could be creating blogs on this stuff as well, okay? You could be making info sheets. You could be making things like, hey, top 10 things to do with the family in social isolation or self-isolation, right? How to stop yourself from pulling your hair out because the kids are home or tips for, um, you know, taking on the role of the teacher as well as parent. So some people are doing that already, but these are things that you can put in there or you could repurpose what others have done and just share that in your content. There's no issue with recycling that content. Okay. Some of the ones I've seen out there are really great. Like one of them has been like cooking tips or like here's some simple meals that you should be able to do without having to search in every single grocery store to find all the ingredients you need. Others have been things like how to actually teach your kids to wash your hands for 20 seconds. And they have like songs and different things that go along with them. Positive, valuable, useful information that if you created yourself might take a long time. Resharing, repurposing is really going to be beneficial. Okay. So it could be lawn care, activities during isolation, best board games to play with the family so that way everyone's not storming off like they played Monopoly, you know, things like that. Now, that's a little bit about local news. Okay, you can have throwback posts from when you've done interviews in the past or things you've done in the past or just things to highlight that are positive things. But if we move away from local news and get onto our last L, that's listings and lead generation. Now, throughout your posts, you need to make sure you're highlighting capture tools. And what I mean by a capture tool is to gather someone's information, their contact information, so you can actually provide them more real estate focused value. You could be highlighting featured listings or a specific listing that you ha are working with or have worked with in the past. Uh, you could be maybe doing something like a survey of your database, which is something I'm talking about in the VAFU or value added follow up accelerators, where you are surveying the people in your sphere of influence and finding out what their interests are personally, what they do professionally, and obviously some real estate information. You incentivize it to encourage them to do it. But really one of the goals and one of the questions you ask is, what types of people do you want to be connected with? What types of people do you need to be connected with? And then you can play that role of connector in your community and bring others together. Because there is a lot of different people in your databases, whether they is this, you know, 
uh, hundred people to thousands of people getting this information from there is really valuable. And then you can have a regular post which promotes that. Okay, so that kind of explains that shop local survey. If you want to learn more about that, join those VAFU accelerator sessions because that covers that in more detail. Those might be ending soon, so really worthwhile to join on to. You could also put other real estate focused content on there like just listed this week or reduced price homes, right? Updates from what's going on because maybe you don't have any listings right now, but this can be something to highlight, okay? From your brokerage or the, the area overall. You could even be talking about any open homes or virtual open homes that you're doing on the weekends. Uh, these are things to kind of communicate there too. So Saturday and Sunday, I mean, it doesn't have to follow this pathway, but these can be just sort of open to whatever you want. Um, or it might be that you don't have a day for each of these. You might just do a little bit of it each day and that's fine too. Now I get a lot of questions in regards to what are the best times to post? When should I post what days? Honestly, every day you should be posting is what I would recommend if you can, okay? If you, you for some reason can't do that every day, then during the week's great, all right? Now, in terms of times, uh, social media platforms have done all sorts of research on the best times to post, okay? Then COVID-19 came in and it put millions of people back home. I think in the United States, it's like 16 and a half million people. Uh, in Canada, it is about a 30th of the population. Um, so a million and a bit people. And so these trends are all gonna be skewed now because people are at home going onto this and just scrolling all the way through. They're just scrolling, 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 looking at news, looking at things on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all that stuff. So. It's not too much of an emphasis on when you post. Best times typically are before 4 p.m. and after sort of nine, that's just like a good range. That kind of covers all platforms. But the way I would recommend doing it is have some sort of morning and lunch post, have an afternoon one and an evening one, or an afternoon one and an early and later evening one. In the very minimal capacity, have morning, lunch, and evening, right? Or morning, afternoon, evening, just three if not five-ish, okay? Because then it's nice and spread out. You don't want to just boom, zoom through all of them at the same time. You want to just kind of spread them out a little bit. Don't feel like you need to be posting something every hour. It's a little bit too much. And I actually find that people that do that just don't really see a spike in their engagement. Um, what you're looking for is value, not spamming people, okay? <clears throat> so having a calendar like this can really help because it can organize when you're going to do these posts. Now, if you're interested in me sharing this calendar or a version of this calendar with you so you guys can use this as something to build off of, by all means, put your email address in the chat box and I can share this with you. I'm more than happy to do that. I'll make it a new copy so it's just yours so you can play around with it how you wish. And you can also ask any questions about the calendar as well. Um, but what you'll notice at the very bottom of this is a Facebook live recap. Now this is something that I would encourage, but it is optional. All of this is optional. You can choose to just disregard everything I'm saying if you want to. But this later evening section where it says Facebook Live Recap is something which I would encourage doing. It's a great piece of content. It takes a few minutes to do. Now the way to do this is to go onto your Facebook application on your device, on your phone, or on your computer and click go live. Now when you do that, what's gonna happen is it's gonna count down from three, it's gonna go three, two, one. And then once it starts recording, you are going to be live. So it's gonna go straight to uh, Facebook and everyone that is in your following, whether it's your personal uh, page you're posting this on or your professional page is gonna be notified that you're going live. So if you are not wanting to go live and do it just bang, like it's going up there right away, then you can just film it separately then upload it as a separate video obviously not everyone will be notified but depends on what you're confident with because some people love the idea of doing a live video others think that is a terrifying thing and so i'm not going to make you do anything that you don't want to do but before we sort of get into that in more detail uh sorry before we get into like the sharing of these in more detail what i want to touch on are facebook live videos okay so any questions about what we've covered up to this point? Otherwise, we'll get into Facebook Live. That'll probably be the next five, 10 minutes. And then I'll share all like a copy of this calendar with everyone that's interested. I can see there's a few emails in there now, which is great. Um, however, if you are 
uh, good to go, just say, nope, I'm good. But use this time for any questions or comments. Otherwise, we'll move on to live videos and then I'll start sharing away this document so you guys can check it out and build your content from there. Okay, so any questions, let me know in the chat box. If you're good to go, just say, nope, I'm good to move on and we can go from there. Any questions, let me know, guys. Uh, if you're good to go, just say, nope, I'm good. And I know we can move on. Cool. Uh, so what do you mean, Josie? What do you mean the missed sessions? Do you mean like the, the coaching sessions? Like where can I go to like catch up with, yes. with any of these that are missed? Hi, Matt. Uh, yes, um, if um, because I missed a couple of them, and um, yesterday's and today's as well, and I might be missing a few uh, next week. I mean, this week. So I want to see if you guys have anything recorded, and I can go and watch it on my own time. Yeah, for sure. So I don't typically record the GTD sessions. I'm recording this one because one of our team asked because they wanted to provide it to a client. Um, uh, I typically re recorded the fundamentals and the skills not all of them are recorded though but the best place okay. to find any recordings that we have is okay. to go to youtube and when you're on youtube you're just going to search park bench in the top section up here so i'll wait for okay. this to load so just give me a second if we type in park bench here what will happen is that you will find at the very top hit where it says park bench and once you're in here, you will have a space that you can go and check out our uh, videos or our playlists is probably the best way to do it. So our players, and I'll put this link in there, will actually show you all the different playlists and options that are available to you. Coaching sessions are really the, the ones you're looking for or any of the masterminds that Brant has done. So okay. I'll put this link into the chat box so you guys can find that. You can even subscribe to our channel if you want. It's not required, but just so you can be notified whenever there's a new video that's been uploaded. Okay, great. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. So let's get on to live videos. We'll, we'll go into this uh, just for a little bit and then I'll get on to sharing that other content out. And what I'm going to do is go through kind of five tips for doing live videos. I think a lot of people build it up in their mind and they kind of get a little bit confused. So really simple. Like I said before, when you're doing this, you are going to go onto your device, computer or your phone and click go live. When you do this, you have a three second countdown. Once it finishes, you are live. People can watch you as you create the video. So your followers and group members and things like that will be notified when you do this. So make sure you're ready to go. So here are five tips for doing these videos. Number one, decide where or what page you're going to be going live on. Personal, professional, group, event, there's a lot of them. Now, when you do this, the people that are in that group right in that page or connected to that page will be notified. So if I'm going live in a group, it's not going to notify necessarily everyone. It's going to notify the people in that group. Whereas if I go live on my personal page, it'll notify my friends rather than the people that are in like potentially groups that I'm in. Okay. So that's really, really important. Think about where you want to be found and you can always share content into those other ones later on if you wish. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is decide what device you're going to use. Now there's pros and cons for both of these. Using a smartphone typically feels the most familiar, but unless you want to be holding it the whole time, you've got to make sure that you have something to put the device on, some sort of tripod. Okay. You can hold it for sure, but it can actually make your arm get a little bit sore. I call home all the time. So I call back to New Zealand on a regular basis and my arm gets a little bit sore. If I'm talking to someone for 40 minutes and I'm just holding the camera there, I'm finding I'm like holding it up after a little bit. Okay. So that's something to con consider. The other thing to consider with your device uh, on, a, on a mobile version, so like a, your phone is airplane mode. Now, Airplane mode is designed obviously when you're flying. However, what it does is it stops uh, your phone from receiving phone calls and signals that way. So what that will be useful for, for your live videos is when you are on airplane mode, 
and you're doing a live video, you're connected to the internet, it'll prevent anyone from calling you and disrupting that uh, sort of video you're creating. Because when you go live and if someone calls you, if you're not on airplane mode, it'll stop that live broadcast. So that's a really important thing to consider. Now that's not going to happen on your device necessarily, unless you've got other sort of calling features on here. So when you are using your device, it's a little bit easier, but a little bit less manageable in terms of where you can put it. So it's perfect for something like this where I'm just having a conversation, but I'm kind of subject to the lighting a little bit. I can't really be as mobile with this unless I'm holding my device um, up like I would my phone. So these are some of the things you're wanting to be bearing in mind, okay? Now, step three, know what you want to do before you go live. Airplane mode comes up again here. Put your phone in airplane mode or flight mode if you're using this. And if you're not using this, put it into silent, right? So that way no one calls during your video. The other thing you want to consider is turning off anything that's going to take up your internet's bandwidth. So what that means is, I'll give you an example. Back when we were in the office, because we all work remote now, but back when we were in the office and Grant would have his weekly webinars, which he used to do, uh, what would happen is that when Grant was doing these weekly webinars, they'd use up a lot of uh, the the company's bandwidth for the internet that we basically said no one go on YouTube or watch any sort of videos during that time. And the reason why is the more devices that are using up more data, more of the internet's bandwidth, the less of the quality of that video. When you're going live, you want it to be a good quality video. So for yourself, when you think about being at home, you might have kids and family at home as well. Make sure that everything's turned off, right? So turn off if you're watching Netflix, right? The kids can have a break from that for a little bit. Get them off the video games and things like that. Make sure no one's watching any videos that is going to take up that time. They can use this as an opportunity to have a bathroom break, right? Have a, a quick little break from looking at a screen all day, right? Because that's pretty much what everyone's doing all the time now. So that's really going to help, okay? So that kind of also goes into checking for a strong Wi-Fi signal. Now, this is something that I do before a lot of my coaching sessions, and it's something that I recommend doing as well. But if you type an interview speed test on Google, you'll have a typically an uh, not interview, sorry, internet. I talk about interviews all the time. Uh, internet speed test. What will happen is that you'll have this option to run a speed test. Now, this is going to gauge how quick your internet is. So the higher the numbers, the better the speed. Okay, so this is me running mine live right now. Uh, we're gonna get a result for our download speed and our upload speed. And it even gives you a summary of how quick or slow or average your internet speed is. So you'd wanna do these live videos when it's faster. Okay, so it says your internet speed is very fast, should be able to handle multiple things, so this would be a good time to do a live video. If it said your internet speed is average or slow, live video is not really gonna be the best option. Okay, so this is a good thing to do even before you have Zoom meetings and interviews or remotely, really good thing to do as well. Awesome. So a few other little tips and, and tricks there, and this is kind of a simple one. Before you go live, you wanna make sure you look good, <laughs> okay? Make sure there's nothing in your teeth before you hit live, right? Make sure your hair is right, you, you got your face on and things like that. You wanna be feeling good about what you're doing. You don't wanna turn it on and go, oh no, because that's all gonna be captured when you go live. So make sure you're feeling and looking good, okay? And now we're gonna move into tip bracket number four. Okay, so we've talked about deciding where to go, deciding what device to use, and what you're gonna do Tip number four is smile. High energy, really, really important. Get fired up before you go live. You gotta bring the energy. I do this all the time with my sessions. I have to be energetic. If I am not energetic on my sessions, you guys are gonna be bored out of your mind and you won't stay on the whole time, okay? So bring the energy. You might have to chuck on Beyonce for, for 10 minutes beforehand, you know, ready to go, and that's fine. I'll do that sometimes with different music to get myself all pumped up, ready to go, but it's about bringing the energy. Because if you come in there low, no one's gonna wanna watch. People like to watch videos and listen to things where people are having fun, they're enjoying themselves. If you're not enjoying yourself and you're not having fun, people are gonna wanna turn it off, okay? So make sure you're bringing that energy. And the last tip, 
that I can give you is to be prepared. Know what you want to talk about, right? And that loops back to how this conversation got started, which is what these Facebook Live recaps are. These Facebook Live recaps are a daily thing, or you could do this every week if you wanted to trim that down, or ideally every week, um, of what you've talked about that day or things that have happened that day. So you could do a daily recap at the end of each day or at the beginning of each day talking about that day or the yes, yesterday's content that you posted. So the Tuesday Facebook Live recap, this one right here, could be talking about the open home post, the shop local survey, the digital businesses offering different things, and maybe a larger event that someone's, um, you know, that you've talked about. It talks about all these things here. Wednesday, you could do a Facebook Live recap on your Zillow report for buyers and sellers, right? The shop local survey and any personal touches that you recommend for buyers and sellers. That could be the purpose of the video. A few minutes long, create it, high energy, you sharing content, you recapping what you've talked about, you talking about what's happening tomorrow, putting it all into a little video. Now, at the end of every single video, you must have a clear call to action. Okay, a clear call to action. And the reason why is because this call to action is going to instruct the audience to do something else. So if my intention after the session was for you guys to you know, send me an email of the people that you're going to reach out to or something along those lines, I need to tell you guys that. So adding in a call to action, adding in a desired action that you want from your audience at the end of your video, really important. You could be telling them to like the page, to check something out, to subscribe to something, right? To reach out to you with any questions or comments or to talk about in the comments your favorite A, B, C, and D, okay? That's what you're really wanting to do. Might even be saying like, hey, and if you know of anyone that would like to be interviewed and featured on the site for free, feel free to leave a comment down below about who you think I should reach out to and I'd be more than happy to make that connection. And then what you do is you use that person and you say, hey, thanks for suggesting them. Do you know someone that works there or is it just a suggestion that you had? And if they're like, hey, I know the owner, I know this person, like, great. I'd love to interview them. Do you, like, would you mind connecting with them or, or something along those lines? And then you're using that neutral connection so it saves you a bit of time, okay? So these are the things you're really wanting to take away from the session. These are the, uh, the steps where it comes to social media, okay? Now, what I'm going to do, right, because you guys have got a bit of time left before, if you're joining the next session, but you've got a bit of time left for you to sort of digest this information. I'm going to share this calendar with anyone that's put their email address in the chat box. If you've yet to do that, feel free to put it in now. You can also put in any questions or queries that you've got about what we've covered so far. Uh, chuck that into the chat box. We're more than happy to unpack any queries you've got. However, if you are good to go, fantastic. Have a fantastic rest of the day. And yeah, I potentially be chatting with you sometime soon, but I'll still be here for another few minutes while I'm sharing this stuff out in case you guys got any questions. Awesome. So I'm going to close down my screen share. You'll still hear me and see me, but uh, I'm going to get to sharing that content out now. Awesome. Thanks, guys.